All right, class, I want to talk about different types of painting. So the first uh, thing that is most well known is um, when we think about it is representational painting. So representational painting means that there that what we're looking at uh, looks like something in the world and it's not abstracted very much. Um, you always have to abstract a little bit because we can't uh, even in a photograph, it kind of flattens the real world. So you have to kind of make some abstractions. But for the most part, when you think of a, a representational painting, it looks like almost exactly very, very close to what we see around us. So if you look at this image, there's reflections in the glass. It's very much three-dimensional. The fish we can imagine holding. Everything feels um, believable. So that's representational painting. The next kind of painting is an abstract painting. So an abstract painting is uh, distorted. So this is a Picasso painting. It's very, very distorted. You could have an abstract painting that was less distorted than this. But the, the thing about an abstract painting is you can still understand what you're looking at. So it, it might be a little bit, um. it might be, I mean, sorry, it might be very distorted, like with this Picasso. So we know that this is a skull. We know that this is a picture. But maybe when you look at it, it takes you a long time to figure that out. Another abstract painting maybe could be distorted less so, like a Van Gogh painting, where looking at it, you, you know pretty well what it is, but it's not realistic. So, but, this, but that's just the idea that abstract painting is distorted, it's changed, but it still has some semblance of reality to it so you know, oh, I'm looking at a skull. Okay. And then there's what's called non-representational painting. Non-representational painting means there is nothing that you are looking at that you know what it is. So maybe what you're looking at <clears throat> um, could remind you of things. So maybe it reminds you of something. But it's not clear that it is actually that. So in this image, we don't know at all what we're looking at. Um, there's different colors of paint and there's brush strokes and there's something there. But it's not, we have no idea what the reference is, if there is any reference. Um, but that is called non-representational painting. So most of the time when people think of abstract painting, they're actually thinking of non-representational painting. Something that... Uh, has no reference, uh, no representation at all. For this assignment, you are going to design a design that is non-representational. So there should be no reference to the outside world. And if there's a reference, it's accidental. Uh, meaning that as you're designing, maybe a shape kind of reminds you of something else. And um, but it's not purposeful. You're not saying, I want to draw the sun here. I want to draw mountains. No, you should be just thinking about pattern and shape and eventually color. So I'm going to show you some more artists that work in the non-representational way. So my favorite non-representational artist is Thomas Niskowski. I really like the colors he chooses and I like he has a weird way with composition where he can make the composition work but it's a little bit awkward, um, and I like that uncertainty. Um, though I picked pieces that are probably a little bit less awkward. So the pieces I chose, I chose because they have good movement. So here, these shapes here have repetition of these curved shapes over and over and over again, and their stripes coming down to so your eye moves across the page, repeating through each shape and that creates that unity that creates that movement the color and the variation between the shape creates the variety but there's a lot of movement um, in this image here's another one so um, you kind of as you go you kind of follow this shape this way as you go but also these background shapes create a lot of movement uh, here's another one um, the the dots Really move your eye around, create movement, create shape. These little pebble-like pieces kind of move you this way, and then you kind of explore the middle area. But again, lots of repetition and 
and the movement is a little bit more subtle, but it's there through the repetition. Uh, here's another one of his. So your eye is just tangled in all those right white lines going around all these black shapes. And then on the edges, you get like these surprise moments of color. And then one last one, um, again, the repetition of these shapes over and over again, they change as they go around, they're cut off in some areas, but you are constantly being um, led around the image, and um, there's little bits of surprises as you're doing that. All right, so, though, so his work, though in person they're not sh extremely clean, there's lots of layers and layers. Um, but from our perspective, they're pretty, looking at these images, they're pretty clear. They have clean edges, right? We know where the shape stops and where it ends um, in all of them. Um, so there's a lot of clean edges, even though there's layers and layers of paint, which is hard to tell in a photograph. But there's those clean edges, um, and it's clarified what we're looking at. I mean, we don't know what the subject matter is because he doesn't really have a representational subject matter, but we know we're looking at a shape where the shape ends, where it starts. Not all of non-representational work is that way. So Joan Mitchell is an abstract expressionist. Her work is a lot messier. So we have colors, we have shapes, uh, but the edges aren't so clear. It's, it's a little bit more chaotic. Um, there's still that movement right almost more so the movement even even more intense uh the movement of the orange brush strokes the movement of the blue brush strokes and again these repetitions of the shapes of the texture keeps our eye engaged so here we go up as we go up the orange really moves us up the blue helps us kind of unify and then a little brush little kind of dot brush strokes um Again, keeps our eye moving around. Another one, if you, this one is a good one to look at. The photograph's really great. And um, you can see the texture and the thickness of the paint. And um, these, really these black brush strokes kind of really move your eye across up. And it starts down here where there's a lot and then it moves you up and around. Look at this little shape here. Very faint, but it really, stops you from going right off the page and moves you back down. So though it seems chaotic, maybe some people say like, oh, a, a small child could do that. Um, but if you really pay attention, there is a structure to the painting, there is a plan. So little marks like this kind of show that plan. I think that's all of them. All right, so in your assignment, you're going to draw a design using movement and um, eventually we're going to do this design four different ways and different color harmonies but right now i don't want you to focus on color because each each time you're going to do it in different colors you'll worry about that later right now i want you to create this design uh, just with pencil um, in your sketchbook planning it out using um, the design um, methods that we've used before that worksheet that i gave you um, designing uh, uh, design that will be painted using uh, m movement as your like your mo your biggest motivator and it must be non-representational so you're using the principle of design you're using movement you're always using variety and unity but you're going to make sure that you're also using movement and you're going to design that. So something like Joan Mitchell is you could attempt that in your design. It's going to be harder to do something more spontaneous and free form like Joan Mitchell's. You're welcome to try it if you're really interested. Uh, Thomas Niskowski is probably a easier way to go since you have to plan out the shapes ahead of time. Um, but again, it's up to you. So after this slideshow please watch the slideshow where I talk about how I came up with my design so you can kind of think about the process all right bye